Now let's, let's play with how you build your story library. Given the fact that you already do have a vast accumulation of stories, what we need to consciously do is to explore how we can categorize or apply those stories into your communication contexts. So whether that's presenting, whether you are sitting in a meeting environment, whether you are in an interview or pitch situation, anywhere where you need to influence someone else, we need to start thinking about how to create and find stories that can support the outcome that you're after. So how do we, how do, we do or create the discipline of developing our stories? So we're going to look at three things. The first one is to develop what's called story radar. In other words, how do you stay alert and open to stories? Also finding stories outside of direct experience, and of course uh, the internet becomes a very uh, obvious way of doing that, and just play with that in a little while too. And then finally, the way that you store and, and order and organize your stories, in other words, the library bit, will be the, th the third element. This morning I was uh, going down to my coffee shop. Uh, our offices are here in Manly in Sydney. And I've been going to this coffee shop for you know, over a year. It's uh, just, just on the corner. And I always have the same stuff. You know, I always have a double shot uh, flat white is my norm. And, and I do enjoy the coffee there, obviously. And going in and, in, in and out of this shop for uh, over the past 12 months, I have no connection really with the people that work there. I mean, they recognize me, I'm a regular customer, but no, no exchange takes place. About three weeks ago, I went in as, as, as normal, and I asked the person behind the counter, what's your name? And his name was Nick. And I said, oh, Nick, is this, is this your coffee shop? And he goes, yes, uh, I've, been, I've been running this place for three years. Now, just the exchange of the name, and I mentioned, in, mentioned my name is Colin. Now, what we had done now is we exchanged a little piece of data, and that, that piece of data we exchanged was names. And since then, every time I now go back into that shop, I'm greeted by name, and of course I greet Nick, and he's got other staff as well that I've, whose names I've, got, uh, uh, I've learned. And now we have this little moment every morning when I do the coffee thing, which has got a communal feel, there's connection, and I'm slowly also getting a little bit of Nick's background, his, his story, and it's an interesting story too. And it's just this little ongoing conversation through the exchange of, of, our, of the purchase. But importantly, we now have a relationship. What was the connecting tissue in that relationship? Was finding out each other's names. The power of names cannot be uh, understated. And it's an important part of a communicator's skill is being good with names and developing them, developing that, that capacity. So now I've just used a little story that I got this morning to link to a message around the importance of names in communication and connection. Now, I could have told you that remembering people's names is important and as part of your capacity to influence and connect with people, developing skill with uh, name recall is so certainly something we should all develop. Now, I can tell you that. I could you know, pass it on as a, as, a, as a lesson. But the story does the work for me. And I got the story this morning. So when we're thinking about looking for stories or what we call story radar, anything and everything that happens to you on a daily basis has got potential for a story. 